Hello, I'm Soycat, and this goes without saying, but war is bad, and so too is basically everything you hear about it. It can be really depressing knowing that people are putting their lives on the line, lots of people will die, entire countries and ideas are at stake, and it means that modern warfare isn't that fun to follow, understandably so. However, war is one of the few things that we seem to have in our DNA as humans, and even though the number of these are going down over time, there are still lots of invasions happening all of the time, and today I wanted to talk about some of the more amusing ones. I think that when you look into history, you can see the light-hearted side just a little bit better and today I want to give you three separate examples of that starting with countries without a military because you might be familiar that a decent number of nations on earth just don't have armed forces which is something that becomes a problem during say World War II which is when Iceland was invaded so I decided to look for an Icelandic source on this to make sure I, I wasn't too biased on my own side because it's something I'm familiar with uh, but basically the way we tell it in the UK is yeah it was just like a brief occupation to make sure it stayed on side uh, but Icelandic people are like yeah we decided that we would stay out of the war even as other countries were being invaded by the Germans, uh, there was just a belief that Reykjavik was probably going to be safe, that Iceland was probably also going to be safe, and uh, Iceland believed that they could just be neutral for the entire time, but this was something which uh, the British disagreed with, because as soon as the, uh, the Germans got to Denmark, and as soon as they got to Norway, uh, Winston Churchill said to Iceland, please let us help you keep your independence, and the Icelandic government said, no, nope, we're neutral, that's fine. Then the British uh, occupied some other islands, which were going through the same thing, and then the Churchill said to them, please, Please, let us occupy your islands, we'll keep you safe in exchange, you know, we'll give you a big boost, economy speaking, if you can just make sure that you uh, don't help the Germans, because then they'll get to the Atlantic, and then our entire thing is done, and uh, the Icelandic people said, nah, no, I don't, I don't really know that we have to deal with that, and so what happened was the British decided to invade Iceland, and once, we, once we'd invaded, then we could force them to do what happened, and uh, it's funny, because uh, one of the fun things about this is that, yeah, we sent some of our worst equipped military ships, we, 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 it was one of the laziest operations ever, the plan was to arrive in the dead of the night, but we'd sent recon planes over the day before. Like, seriously, it's the, it's the one of the hastiest and laziest invasions ever. Um, and so what happened when they got there? Well, the Icelandic government said one of the most mild letters to being invaded. They're like, uh, we have informed you that our representatives are on land. Uh, it's that we do not agree with you invading us. And uh, this, according to that, the Icelandic government violently objects to the British armed forces. And it is, of course, expected that you will repay us for this. You really shouldn't be invading us. And it's funny, because the British army... Uh, when they arrived, they apparently spoke, made, made this letter in Broken Icelandic, which just says, yeah, please don't leave the city for a few hours and uh, don't broadcast on the radio. Our goal is just to stop the Germans, and if we, we, we'll apologize for the inconvenience, and we hope it ends as soon as possible. This is such a funny thing, in my opinion. Like, this sounds like an email you get from your bank, but it's actually a foreign country invading you. And so the fact that the, the attitude from both sides was like, yeah, I guess this has to be done, huh? It's just absolutely hilarious. It is very rare that you get an invasion where both sides are so apathetic about the entire thing, but that's what happened when the British invaded Iceland. And, uh, you know, it, in case you think, like, wow, invading small countries, that sucks for you, UK, um, the Icelandic got us back in the Cod Wars in the end, when we, we fought over uh, the amount of fish in the ocean there, and they apparently won that as well. So you don't need a military to win wars, and you don't even need, <laughs> which is funny by itself, um, but also, it's worth keeping in mind that if you don't have a military, someone else can just bring in their guns and say, now you're gonna do this, which is one of the reasons most countries have them, although Iceland is in NATO. So I think they're pretty protected on that front now. Speak, uh, and by the way, the uh, the fact that they went from being this farming rural place to being super developed is in, due, uh, is in part to the fact that they had to have huge bases be built here and all of the surrounding infrastructure, which of course Iceland gets to keep after the war. Something which is pretty fun. Just like how uh, something else pretty fun is the Caribbean. This is one of the weirdest places for countries on the planet because you have some very tiny countries that only exist by nature of the fact that they're fairly medium-sized islands uh, somewhat distant from the islands around them. You get a very high density of countries here, and so I wouldn't blame you if you haven't heard of Granada, but if you haven't, let me tell you about one of the fun parts of their history. They had a people's revolutionary government in uh, the 1970s. Uh, the Marxist-Leninist uh, New Dual movement overthrew the government, suspended the constitution, and said, yep, yeah, we're in charge now, and I just wanted to share something, because this is the coat of arms for Granada, and I, I immediately, I, I, thought, I, I thought to myself, wow, this is fun, they have an armadillo and a pigeon on there, and then I thought, I just clearly don't know animals, this is me being offensive. I'll look into what's actually on the coat of arms, and if you look into it, you'll find out that it is a armadillo with a dexter and a pigeon with the sinister. It, this is an armadillo and a pigeon. What a fun flag they have going on. Anyway, uh, the People's Revolutionary Government was overthrown by the U.S. Reagan government. Uh, the official reason as to why is that the uh, all the other states in the area, all of the other East Caribbean countries, including Jamaica, uh, were just like, please stop doing what you're doing. This is this is really starting to mess with us a little bit here. Could you just not? Uh, they were worried about the ties they were starting to build and all that 
that sort of stuff. And uh, that, that's the official reason. But the uh, and the other official reason is that there were 600 medical students, and when the uh, the socialist party started to fracture, it looked like it might result in a civil war. And so America just came in as they do and said, "Nah, we we're gonna stop this. I think you're gonna I think you're gonna go back to following that constitution." And uh, that's precisely what they did. And now Granada lives happily ever after. But there's a fun little uh, you know there's an extra tidbit to this. One of those is the fact that even while it was a socialist uh, government, even while they had a coup and overthrew the government, the leader of the country at the time, the official head of state, was still Elizabeth II because they decided to keep the queen as part of the whole, like, keeping things stable. Sure, they suspended the constitution and sure, there was a lot of infighting, but, you know, the st same head of state still. I think that's a, a fun little tidbit. But another little f fun tidbit about this is that Reagan, uh, who was, of course, behind the US invasion, uh, had to uh, phone uh, the British Prime Minister at the time and say, you know what? I'm really really sorry about this and because uh, enough time has passed uh, we can actually see this where he's like yeah I came in really shouldn't have invaded her uh, my my bad he explains his justification behind it he's like well um you know I totally understand my bad and it's funny at the end like uh, after such a serious conversation about the invasion of a nation um they they, they kind of word it like this my pleasure just fine I <laughs> shall all right maybe this is how all world leader calls go but it's fascinating Oh, all right. Go get him. Eat him alive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know why this is so amusing to me. It's one of my favorite phone calls ever. That just after invading a sovereign nation, uh, he also has to make a call and be like, Oh, there's some people I said I would call before I did this. I promised the British government I would call them before making invasions. And now I'm embarrassed about that. And I think that's hilarious uh, that it works that way. But you know what else I think is uh, pretty interesting? Um, this one's not funny yet. This one, ooh, this one's not funny yet. Although I want to mention, just as an aside, um, that of, of all the places in the world where people talk about colonialism, they usually mean that there is an outside force coming in and replacing the natives. The Falklands are one of the few places on the planet where there is a permanent population where before people moved there, there wasn't one. Funnily enough, one of the other examples of this is Iceland. They're one of the few, you know, colonizing countries. It was uh, Danish, Norwegians and stuff coming over here. Nordic people, I guess, more broadly. Um, but they came over here, they became farmers, and because there was no one there before them, it's entirely fine. It's a it's a very interesting uh, little, little tidbit that I want to move on the side here. But the final thing I want to talk about is the Battle of the Paracel Island. And I want to mention this because uh, you might be familiar with South Vietnam, uh, famous from the Vietnam War. Uh, what you know what the other side was called? If I'm not mistaken, North Vietnam. Wow, that, look at that. So um, basically, the Vietnam War was a pretty big war in Vietnam between two sides of that country. Trying to keep things nice and neutral here. <laughs> Hopefully that language is nice and diplomatic. But as a fun aside of what happened uh, after, uh, during the war, um, you know, China believes that they own all of the South China Sea. That's why they call it the South China Sea. And uh, some of these islands were ruled by South Vietnam, and so China figured, given that they're, uh, you know, they were already funding the the side which was winning anyway, why not just come in and take these islands? You know, it was very close to the end of the war, uh, as you can see. This was in January 19, 1974. Uh, the, the war ended in 1975, so like it's close to the end of the war. The the results looking more and more guaranteed. Why not just scoop in while while everyone else is so busy finishing up with that, and just maybe take some of these islands? And that's precisely what they did. There was apparently uh, a little bit of a mess up because they, they captured one American soldier and they were like oh dear god we, we really 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 should not have this uh, there to like take him back and stuff I think it's a funny thing, but yeah, basically, uh, while a country is at uh, while a country is at civil war, just deciding to scoop in there and take some islands from them is a bit of a power play. Admittedly, some people did die. You know, eighteen Chinese people, a hundred plus. It's it's very tragic on that level, and it's tragic that a country just feels like their claim to a tiny bit of territory is worth that much. But one of the reasons why China has such a huge stake in the South China Sea is because of these little incursions here and there. Being a stable government in the long run does give you huge benefits, and I think that there's. A, a thing to be taken from that, right? Is that if you are at war with yourself, then everyone else can come in and they can start realizing that your unified response is going to be much weaker. Um, and so as a fun aside to this, uh, just keep in mind, you know, a lot of people say the US is going to civil war, a little over-exaggeratedly, but if you ever did do that, if, you, if, if, you, if you're in the US and you're considering it, just know that while you guys are fighting each other, Canada's co totally coming in and they're taking Washington. There's, there's no question about it. There's a perfectly defendable river border here. And so, you know, if you're willing to give up Washington, if you're willing 
willing to give up Minnesota, maybe Montana too, depending on how uh, long the war goes on for, especially Maine. I mean, uh, but if you're willing to give up those states, you can go to war for yourself. But if you're not willing to, don't don't be fighting a civil war. That That's probably the biggest lesson from this, is if you have a long, stable government, even if it's a bad government, it works pretty well. If you have a short, unstable government, you're probably going to get invaded by people with helicopters and artillery guns. Yeah, there we go. That's the good lesson to take away from this video. War is bad, and the easiest way to prevent it is to be strong. Or to not have a military, but make friends. Uh, if you don't have a military at all, just make friends of the people who do have the big guns. You know, that's probably what most of the world is trying to do right now, huh? With that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, let me know if you enjoy the slightly uh, more amusing look into history, or if you think that war should never be joked about, and that all those penguins on the Falkland Islands actually are the true native inhabitants. I I'd love to know. For now, though, thank you for watching. Second channel, don't care. Goodbye.